Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Primetime News here on Joy News on Multi TV with me, Gifty Ando Apia. You can also watch on ABN Sky Channel 235 in London and across Europe. Coming up in the next hour, resident engineers working on the West Hills Mall underpass say what appears to be cracks on some pillars are not cracks at all and that the construction needs strict international standards. Also tonight, despite initial resistance from commercial transport unions, it appears the vehicle owners are adhering to a directive by the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority to register only vehicles with seatbelts. We'll also bring you a special report on the struggles of residents of Glyphe in Aqua, who, unlike other communities in the capital, have lived with lack of development for years. In business, the chief executive officer of the Institute of Chartered Accountants uh, of Ghana wants government to implement its own risk assessment project captured in the 2015 budget while waiting for the IMF to approve a support program for Ghana. Elsewhere in Nigeria, the military has been explaining what happened in Saturday's Boko Haram attack on the Baga Barracks, triggering fierce gun battle with Nigerian soldiers. We have all these plus the latest in sports and showbiz coming up shortly. Please stay with us. Now let's take a look at the details now. Residing in some communities in Accra hardly come with comforts that one would expect from living in a capital city. Now from roads, floods to destruction of homes by the sea, residents of Glyphe in Accra have been struggling with lack of development for years. Join us athlete Arthur has more. Glyphe is an area close to the sea. It is surrounded by communities such as Dansoman, and it's under the jurisdiction of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. One major problem of this community has been tidal waves washing away homes. Apart from the sea, gradually destroying homes as it presses forward, the people of Glyphe have had to endure floods for years. The gutters being constructed are expected to ease flooding in the area by carrying water into the sea. The fact that the buildings here were constructed without proper demarcation has been a major challenge for the construction of the gutters. A typical example is this particular gutter that runs through two buildings and it is so close to the doors of one of the buildings. Construction of the gutter started in June 2014 and it is expected to be completed in March 2015. Residents will heave a sigh of relief once this dusty one kilometer stretch is tired. Contractors say work on the main road will continue once construction of the gutters is completed. Parents also wish for a public school and a health center in the community. Schools 
Maybe we have, but met back as a SS and me who be a government school and Casanca and Casasudin, your private schools in Quan Eden, a clinic is today, a bin your first name, two baby Besha Habibi, and Susiano, and no beam. This is a BBC or I see a first name, BBC, I just a woman in Pansu Senechi, the Don Coca and Cofaca, but this year Ruda beam named Fisia Bia, a Bahana clinic behind me and ran with About 400 pupils. The school is helping to keep the dreams of these young ones alive. This is the Young Christian International School, one of the several private schools in this community. Excuse me. It's from Pregnancy to Jesus. So you have students here taking the BEC exams? Oh, for the past five years, we have been taking BEC exams. Yeah, and we have been doing very well. We will need a government intervention to um, give us support in terms of uh, learning items and, and others. We will appreciate that a lot. As well as scholarships? As well as scholarships, yes. With all its challenges, Residents of Glyphe still find the time to relax by swimming. Monday, I will be on Kodume. You will feel that you are Jalika Kran, I say. You are the Jay and Nikakra. It is a Guma. A new child, you are quite silly. It's all better to walk or better or maybe you are the Dura. That's a hot and hot and normal. As with the entire country, residents here also experience their fair share of power rationing. Some residents also confirmed they hardly experienced acute water shortage. Joyce Archery, who moved here with her family eight years ago, is hopeful this community will rise above its challenges and become a better place if authorities are committed to the basic needs of the people. Adelaide Arthur with that report. Now the National Accreditation Board will soon be given the mandate to operate as an authority. Executive Secretary Kwame Date says a new act which is expected to take effect in 2015, that is this year, will give the board much control and influence to execute on its mandate. The act which established the board did not give its independent persecuting powers to enable it to take legal action against persons or institutions that offered unaccredited diploma or degree programs. According to the Executive Secretary Kwame Dati, the case for a more empowered National Accreditation Authority has become stronger in the wake of unaccredited institutions recently awarded and conferring honorary degrees on some individuals in Ghana. Among other things, it can uh, enforce lots of its regulations. At the moment, most of them will have to be referred to the minister. But uh, the minister has agreed that some of them should be done at the level of the board itself. So when it is converted into an authority, uh, these things will be done by the board. Again, we are tightening the regulatory mechanism to ensure that those things will not happen. He added, the board is also putting measures in place to ensure institutions meet international standards. Lots of things are happening. What the accreditation board is concerned with is to ensure that there's comparability of products at all times. Because you cannot go out and say that um, because I am coming from a developing country, my products cannot meet certain threshold standards. That's unacceptable. So the accreditation board is doing its best to always research into the best practices everywhere so that at least we will meet threshold standards. He further cautioned the public to be more vigilant and to always verify the status of institutions before enrolling for their services. Educational experts say the current system in which students are made to concentrate more on theory to the neglect of practical studies has proved to uh, has proved unfavorable to Ghana's socio-economic needs. Speaking to Joy News, educationist Hani Zafar said there's an urgent need for a shift in the education structure to address the critical shortfall. 
The transformation, he said, should aim at creating an educational system that would give students more time and resources to undertake practical work that would help put into use the various experiences acquired in the classroom. By the time someone is from class one, by the time they get into the university system, they've been sitting in classroom for 16 years. Doing what? Doing. Copying notes from textbooks, copying them back for exams, getting the results in the exams, and then you realize that it's all a certain type activity. They're talking and they're listening. So the time has come where the teacher training institutes have to begin to now understand that we cannot continue doing the same thing and expect a, a productive result. So the challenges are very um, are clear that we cannot follow the colonial format where everyone has to be a, an academician. There are a lot of people who can be. And so we have to begin to look at that, how we can begin to restructure education in the country where everyone has a stake in it. Stake in it, yet not, just not to pass examinations, but where they can have something that is legitimate, something that is interesting, something that can be fulfilling, and something that can be economic for them. He stressed, if these measures are put in place, the country's education system will start to produce graduates with employable skills, rather than the current system which contributes to the rising unemployment situation. You see, everything does not have to be academics. And then if you look at, you know, Ghana is so endowed with local content, natural, uh, natural materials, but we don't have any of these things incorporated into our education system. So what I'm saying is this, it's time for us to begin to move a bit away from the academics. There are, there's nothing wrong with the academics for people who are that way inclined. But there's everything wrong with academics for those who are not that way inclined. These are the kinds of things that we really have to begin to look at. He also called for a standardized form of examination across the country. Away from education now, the National Health Insurance Authority has assured health service providers of prompt payment of their claims this year. According to the authority, delays in payments, which became a major source of friction between the authority and healthcare institutions, will be a thing of the past. The Health Insurance Service Providers Association of Ghana, HESPAC, the preceding year reduced their services to NHIS card-bearing members due to government's failure to pay the monies owed them. Mission hospitals, who were key service providers, also returned to the cash and carry system of providing health care. The continuous delay forced HESPAC to threaten legal action against the NHIE because, according to them, the delay in paying the monies affected affected the smooth running of their health facilities. Chief Executive of the NHISC, his outfit is putting the necessary measures in place to address the situation. We have had very useful discussions within government and every effort is being done by all relevant agencies and uh, ministries to ensure that our programs are successful. Uh, key among this is uh, ensuring that we have enough resources to cater for maturing obligations, claims for that matter, is that by the close of 2015, we should be able to manage a minimum of 70% 70, 70 of total claims generated across the country. And that would have given us a, a, a greater percentage in terms of uh, efficiency. He was hopeful the challenges of delays in payment of claims will not be repeated, adding the authority is working to improve relationship with service providers. Matilda Pomaga, for Joy News, Accra. You're still watching the primetime bulletin here on Joy News on Multi TV and also on ABN TV across Europe. We'll take a breather. When we come back, we have some more news. You're welcome back and many thanks for staying. Now, what appears to be cracks on some pillars forming part of the underpass linking the main Accra Kaswa Highway to the West Hills Mall are not cracks at all. Well, they have been described as carbon deposits left from gas that was used in cutting off rusted metal sleeves used in the construction of those pillars. Our reporter, Kopna Chenche Henebwating, was part of an inspection tour of the underpass and has come through with this report.
A drive to the newly opened West Hills Mall at Dukuna in New Botiano requires a turn off the main highway to an underpass that leads to the edifice. Though 93% complete, the underpass has been commissioned and according to many, has helped significantly divert vehicular traffic on the main highway. Few months after the commissioning, however, there have been reports of some detected defects on some aspects of the project, particularly the pillars found at the underpass section of the mall. From afar, linear markings identical to that of cracks are seen, but an up-close shot of the structure suggests otherwise. That's a layman's observation, but what do the experts say about what seems like cracks? The methodology we've used to achieve these, to get them to that smooth um, um, level, is because we use a sleeve, a metal sleeve, a smooth metal sleeve. So it is a, just a technology or a methodology we use so that we don't plaster the pillars. Now, if you had come before, if you had come earlier, you would have seen the sleeves, all metal, rusted metal, all gone. We need to wash them off, we need to cut them off. And the method that we use was to use acetylene and gas to wash them. So those are carbon deposits just from the gas, like you see a water using. So those, those are the remnants of that gas. And they'll be, they'll be cleaned off, just like anybody would do a house and then put a filler and bring a paint and I don't know they have it painted. But this won't be painted. But it will just be cleaned off with a brush, an iron brush, or a stone, which is the normal stone used in grinding, and it will be cleaned off as part of the um, finishing works, which will be done. Yao Osafumafu Jr. is resident engineer for the project. He tells Joy News there's no cause for alarm as the design and methodology seen with the construction is the first of its kind in the country, hence the worry. These yeah. columns over here were piled, unlike the conventional one where you would see the construction works with formwork and timber, it was not done that way. We had these piles, so it means that whilst we had the bare ground, we drilled into them at depths of in excess of about nine meter, and the procedure is such that um, when you're piling, you add a little more on top of it. Because you're on the ground, you don't see, you add a bit more. So if it's 9 meter, you make it, say, 10 meter. If the design depth is 10 meter or the design height is 10 meter, you make it 11 meter. The reason is to give you enough um, tolerance so that when you are doing the deck surfacing, you can break back. The term is called breaking back. So what people have seen is actually breaking back. You can compare it to somebody who is putting up his building and wants to fix in window frames. You see the mason going back to chisel to break back in order to put in the frames and then he'll grout it again. It doesn't mean that because you see a hole, it means it's a defect. These have been deliberately, or these have arisen because of our deliberate action to break back the piles to the right height with a jackhammer, and that is why you see that. So these even occurred before we even got to the stage where we had the deck slab. Roads and Highways Minister Inusa Fuseini, who visited the site, dismissed reports of defects associated with the construction after inspecting the project with focus on the reported cracks. He said the project is expected to take shape fully by the end of January. I'm here with the Chief Executive of the Ghana Highways Authority and staff, technical staff of the Ghana Highways Authority. And I can tell you as a matter of fact that there is nothing absolutely wrong with what you are seeing here. The integrity of the bridge we are told is solid. It, has, it is not and has not been compromised. We have been told that within the next month, that is by the end of uh, uh, January 2014, uh, 2015, uh, all this will be done and you will not see cracks here. They actually are not cracks. They are just vibrations that have peeled up the top part and that has been done deliberately by the technical, technical advice that I have received. Meanwhile, owners of the mall say the reports of structural defects have not in any way affected business. Um, I think these are genuine concerns of the mall users. They saw something that they did not understand and they obviously uh, complained and took some pictures and it went viral. So I don't blame them because we are all here for the safety of the mall shoppers, those who use this place, and that is our cardinal uh, thing, safety and security of the place. Would it be a deliberate attempt by someone or some groups? Or some group I wouldn't of say a mischievous attempt, no, I don't think so. I feel it was a genuine concern by a concerned citizen. So we welcome such uh, things. And as explained by the minister and by the technical team of GHA, this is an approved bridge and it's been supervised by the GHA. Has this latest development in any way affected business? No, not at all. I don't think so. Rather, it will probably increase business. The Roads and Highways Minister, after assessing the building, was taking around the site for an update on the progress of work so far. For Joy News, 
kwabna chenche hene boating. The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, in September last year issued a directive that commercial vehicles without seat belts would not be registered. Although some commercial transport unions kicked against the directive, checks by Joe News on day two of the registration exercise indicate that vehicle owners are complying despite a few who usually plead ignorance. Go to the bed. Yes. It is the second working day of the year, and as it was to be expected, cars massed up at the car parks of the police barracks nearby as DVLA officials hustled for space to accommodate the large turnout of owners waiting to register their vehicles. At the private testing station, scores of vehicles were seen in queues waiting their turn to be inspected. Here, officials did general inspection with particular emphasis on fitting of seat belts. Most of the vehicles met the various requirements, except for a few owners who pleaded ignorance of the seat belt directive. I Greater Accra Regional Manager for the DVLA, Noah Tete Mate, said so far the exercise has been smooth and praised vehicle owners for their adherence to the guidelines set for this year's registration exercise. Uh, it has made the whole thing so decent. It followed procedure and it has been so smooth. When you look around now, you will see that there is no much vehicle in the yard. Uh, is because of the measure we have put in place. Vehicles which were inspected before the close of 2014, we ask that they should not bring them in. You come with your document and then we do the processing. Touching on the electronic roadworthy certification, which began in December last year, he said it forms part of the DVLA Electronic System Initiative to eradicate fake roadworthy documents. He also added that complementary devices for the police to detect road traffic offenses will be rolled out very soon to ensure strict enforcement of the law. Of no, uh, the MTTD and the DVLA are nice collaborators. Uh, we are coming out with an instrument for which the MTTD will use to detect the genuineness of this electronic uh, roadworthy we are issuing. Uh, with this present technology in the system, um, there is a possibility of our competitors catching up quickly and therefore we must come out with something for the police to be able to check and see uh, whether there is some fake ones coming into the system. Authorities at the DVLA are however calling on the public to respect the rules that govern the use of DV plates which are purposely for vehicles loaded from a ship or when it is being tried by or on behalf of an intended purchaser. Redwan Karim Dini Osman, Joy News, Accra. This is the Primetime Bulletin here on Joy News on Multi TV. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. Now, a former senior Crown prosecutor in the UK, Godwin A.J. Jemfi, has revealed in a Facebook post regarding the trial of Nailia Metape that a call was made to the court on the 2nd of January 2015 that she wishes to change her guilty plea. The Ghanaian Austrian lady was arrested by UK authorities with 12.5 kilos of cocaine at Heathrow Airport. She pleaded guilty in court on November 27, 2014, at her first appearance. Well, she may be content 
contemplating vacating her earlier guilty plea. Nailia Metefe pleaded guilty to exporting narcotic drugs uh, to the United Kingdom on her first appearance following her arrest. But the court is yet to inform the Crown Prosecution Service formally because the staff who receive the call is not sure of the authenticity, uh, authenticity of the call. Nailia was due in court today, but the hearing was postponed to Tuesday, January 6, 2015, because prosecutors could not complete a forensic evaluation of the purity of the cocaine. She was expected to be sentenced at the next agenda date if the call is authenticated as coming from Nile. The case may be taking a dramatic turn. If she maintains her early guilty plea, she's looking between 9 to 10 years with a discount for early guilty plea. However, if she fights the case and is found guilty, she may be looking at 13 years. Mr. J. Jemphy stated this on his Facebook post. We have him on the telephone lines. Now let's go to him and get some more details. Hello, sir. Good evening and many thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now could you t tell us what this whole twist is about? Well, I mean, there are, there are two competing interests. That is, um, following on from her first appearance, she had pleaded, as you quite rightly stated, guilt. Therefore, you should expect a moral sentence. That involves the prosecution presenting the facts of the case and directing the judge to the relevant authorities to support the likelihood of uh, the sentence. Mm. After, the defense will then uh, present um, mitigating circumstances, i.e. as to why she committed the offense. Okay. And following on from then, the judge will then pronounce sentence. Right. Now, the other interest is that um, she may well be case, that is, change her plea. Now, if that happens, then the court will adjourn the proceedings and, and uh, list the case for a trial at a future date. Now, I cannot confirm whether this will happen or not, because as you quite rightly again stated, that the, the communication that was received from the court the court are not sure of right. the authenticity, and therefore, they are going. They have not, sorry, should I say, formally informed the prosecution the authorities, right. and will wait for tomorrow. But but what would the, what did it, what what would this kind of uh, turnover of events mean for her? Hello, Mr. Jeffy, can you hear me? We seem to have lost him on the line. Godwin A. J. Jenfe is a former Crown uh, prosecutor, uh, telling us, giving us a bit of perspective over there about Nyla Mutafe's case in UK. Uh, moving on, the U.S. Justice Department says two men have been charged in the United States with attempting to overthrow the Gambia's president, Yaya Jammin. The men who are of Gambian origin will appear in court on accusations of conspiring against a friendly nation and conspiring to possess firearms. Gambian authorities say they had thwarted an invasion on December 30. Yaya Jame was abroad when heavy gunfire broke out near the presidential palace in the capital Banyu on December 30. He later returned home and accused dissidents based in the U.S., U.K. and Germany of being behind the attack. Jame seized power in a tiny West African nation in 1994 and is accused of not tolerating any opposition. The search mission to find the flight data recorders from the crashed Air Asia passenger plane has resumed as weather conditions improve over the Java Sea. Java sea. 
Flight QZ8501 was flying from Surabaya, Indonesia, to Singapore on December 28 when it disappeared from radar. Search teams have recovered 37 bodies, but the remains of most victims are thought to still be in the plane. Bad weather has hampered attempts to reach large objects thought to be the body of the plane. Officials told the BBC's Indonesian service on Monday that sonar equipment had been deployed underwater but that the weather means no divers uh, were yet back in the water. The head of Indonesia's search and rescue agency, Bambang Soli Estoyo, said in a news briefing that three more bodies were recovered on Monday. Elsewhere, Boko Haram fighters have overpowered Nigerian soldiers at a military base in the far northeastern town of Baga, Forcing residents of Abigail Adomakwenji, we start off with something on the IMF and CEO of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana, ICAG, Fred Moore, says government, while waiting for the IMF to approve a program to salvage the economy, can begin implementing its risk assessment projections from the 2015 budget. Although he is confident Ghana will receive the support, he says Ghanaians will have to show more commitment in working hard to make the economy a strong one with or without the IMF. Difficulties, Ghana approached the IMF in August 2014 for support. The program, which was expected to take effect in January 2015, is still pending. Meanwhile, analysts are expectant that a program from the Bretton Woods Institution will save the economy. CEO of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana, ICAG, Fred Moore, although optimistic about the program, says government's risk assessment projections in the budget is an alternative. The alternative is not worth bearing in mind. Um, However, I also know um, that any, the finance minister and the ministry would have looked at the budget and risk assess any projections that they were making. And therefore, I'm hopeful that any risk assessment that had, they had done would have included the potential of the not getting the IMF loan, and therefore they can manage that in that. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy, because when you run an organization or a company, and you risk assess. It means you are taking a risk, but it also means that there's a second option. Your second options are not normally as good as your first option. So let's hope that the first option will come right, which will mean the IMF supporting Ghana and helping Ghana through this difficult period. For him, governments must stay focused and embark on programs with a clear purpose. Because I would have wanted to see less deliverables and actually achieving those deliverables to give confidence both to the economy, to the economy and to the people in the country. For example, do we need more roads? And if we create the infrastructure for a developing economy, people would then come in and build the schools. Um, that's the so because I can't tell what the vision um, is. It's been every government for the last probably 20 years tend to have too many programs and projects that need to be delivered within 365 days, mm. and therefore everything gets congested and gets backed up, and therefore things are not delivered on time. Um, look at our roads. We keep building hundreds of roads every year, but we don't build any one of them that well enough to last long enough. Fred Moore also called on Guineans to support government in building the economy. The limit to our growth, the limit to our success will be limited by the amount of love we give back to the country. Mm. Because that limits the tax city that the government can raise. That limits the quality of programs that we do, and therefore that would limit the infrastructure base, that investment needs to drive out of. The IMF, however, says government is meanwhile taking steps to clean up the payroll and also seek external financial assurances from bilateral donors and international institutions before they can agree at the staff level before proposing it to the IMF Executive Board for consideration. Abigail Atomakwenchi for Joy News. Now, Akhaya's empty streets bounced back to life on Monday after a brief period of inactivity from most traders. Join us this Latif Idris reports hawkers in particular who had deserted the streets to join in the Christmas celebrations have found their way back onto the streets and so has the traffic. 
After a long year of working, some traders took some days off during the Yuletide period to relax. Their absence freed up the otherwise congested street shoulders where shops are often dotted in the middle of the street where the hawkers ply their trade. But with many corporate organizations starting their first full working day of 2015 on Monday, Accra is at its busiest. Traffic is present and so are the traders who say business is gradually picking up. For now, I see I, there's a rise in the customer base, the selling, yeah. During the Christmas, you know, all the attention came to Accra Central. People do not normally come here because most of the shops here are closed. We are the only person open. But right now, it's like all the shops are open, so the attention has come back here. So the pattern is now more normal now. Yeah. But, but oh, as you see, we are the business people around here. We are the people people used to come here. But like, during the Christmas, the business was busy. Maybe, yeah, too much busy, I see. But like, when you, uh, the Christmas off, maybe it becomes too little. But like, people are just enjoying, like, they are selling. But it's not too much as it was the Christmas. Not all businesses, however, are having a field day. Daniela J, a fashion designer, tells the news team, patronage of Ghanaian-made fashion items continue to dwindle as many Ghanaians prefer to buy already-made clothes. Uh, one thing that is disturbing us most of us, the, 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 like the men's wear, is the importation of uh, other foreign dresses that is coming, like trousers and the coat and that kind of thing, has disturbed us about 70%. You know, when you go to market, it's easy to go to uh, 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 so shops and buy those dresses and later on they bring it for trash and fold it for me, it's too long and we'll turn, turn up and that kind of thing. And how much are you going to charge? And when you compare the material, the clothes and the sewing, when the measure is the sew is different when you bought it from the store. And with comparison, I think people normally go to the shops and buy the trousers and do alteration on it than to buy the material to sew. So it has let the work down. I'm Some market women who spoke off camera said the situation is currently not encouraging but hope the trend improves in the coming days. Latif Idris reporting for Joy News. Now, are you on the SNIT pension scheme? If yes, then I have some good news for you. From the end of this month, your benefits will go up by 23%. So, for instance, if you were taking 200 Ghana CDs as at December 2014, this should result in a 46 Ghana CD increase. While fresh pensioners will also, by the end of this month, see a 15% jump in their monthly benefits. Meanwhile, the Controller and Accountant General's Department says it has completed the automation of the payment of salaries for public sector workers in three major regions in the country. The department rolled out an electronic salary payment voucher system as part of measures to rid government's payroll of ghost names following the introduction of Ghana Integrated Financial Management Information Systems, GEFMIS. And that does it for business. I'm Abigail Adumakwenchi. Do stay on for sports with George Adijunia. Business news was brought to you by. Time now for some sports and Sports Minister Mahama Yariga has directed the Ghana Football Association to find alternative means of remunerating staff and committee members of the various national teams and not depend on the state. Prior to this directive, members of the various management committees were paid per diems from government's coffers. Mahama Yariga have insists the practice must cease. This position that the FA staff uh, as much as they play an important role in the management of the team, they, they should rely on themselves to remunerate themselves. 
and I think that the FA has great potential to make money. Okay, so by that you mean getting sponsorships and, and doing their own? Yeah, okay. precisely, and, and not to rely on government support for the Black Stars. And so we did have some discussions at which we agreed with the FA. It wasn't, you know, we agreed with them that um, there has to be changes in terms of how they get remunerated from government budget to support for tournaments and that they should look elsewhere for uh, financial support mm. for themselves and then for their activities. All right, let's talk about the Black Stars. Why not? They have arrived in Sevilla in Spain to fine-tune preparations ahead of the African tournament, which kicks off in a fortnight. Coach Adam Grant, before the departure from Accra last night, dropped six players from the initial 31-man squad called up. Enokadu Kofi, Albert Adoma, Stephen Adams, Mahatma Otu, Alfred Duncan and Ebenezer Sifua were asked by the Jolie trainer. The senior national team, the Black Stars, have landed in Sevilla, Spain, where they will continue preparations towards the African tournament to be staged in Equatorial Guinea in a fortnight. The Black Stars landed in Spain this afternoon, where they will be camping for the next 10 days. Ghana, who have been placed in Group C alongside Algeria, Senegal and South Africa, had light shake-ups this evening. The 26-month squad will use these next few days to justify their inclusion for a place in Avam Grant's final team for the tournament. Meanwhile, Spain-based goalkeeper Razak Braima has joined the Black Stars squad. The 27-year-old made a short trip to the El Rampido Golf Hotel where the Black Stars will be based for the next few days. Primer's arrival in the camp makes the goalkeeping department set following the exclusion of Stephen Adams before the team travelled to Spain to conclude their preparations ahead of the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations. The former FC Narnia shortstopper will be competing for a starting role with the Black Stars at this month's tournament against Fatal Dauda and Enes Soa. More on our build up to the African Cup of Nations and coaches of 16 qualified teams for this month's showpiece are in a race against time to make available their final 23 month squads before CAF's Wednesday deadline. Key amongst them, Ghana, Senegal, and Algeria uh, have to make tough decisions over ailing players. Coaches for the teams going to Equatorial Guinea for the Nations Cup have just over 36 hours to submit their full list of players for the tournament. That Wednesday deadline means some managers are scrambling to complete their lineups due to late injuries to some players who looked a short bet to be heading to the Central African venue. Senegal boss Alain Gires is one of those with a decision to make. His Southampton based striker Sadio Mane has been ruled out of the tournament due to injury. The 22 year old suffered the injury in the Saints. 2-0 Premier League win over Arsenal on the 1st of January and missed Sunday's one all draw in the FA Cup against Ipswich. That will be a lifeline for the excluded Demba Bar. The Besiktas forward had hit out at Gires, calling the Frenchman a puppet after he was left out of the original Teranga Lions squad. Meanwhile, Ghana coach Avram Grant will also be keeping a close eye on injury news, especially on Leicester City's Jeffrey Schlupp, who had a scan on a knee injury he picked up in their 2 all draw with Liverpool on New Year's Day. Schlupp wasn't part of the team that beat Newcastle United in the FA Cup. Grant is also keeping an eye on Majid Waris of Turkey's Trasplant Spor. Algeria have confirmed two replacements for Nations Cup uh, for the Nations Cup. On capped Ahmed Kashi and fullback Leasine Kadamuro have been drafted into the Desert Foxes squad following injuries to Esaid Belkalem and Mehdi Abeid. French board Kashi plays for Mets in the French League A, while Kadamuro on the books of Osasuno in Spain was part of their squad at last year's World Cup finals in Brazil. Finally, South Africa beat 2012 champion Zambia 1-0 in a Nations Cup warm-up match on Sunday. Substitute Tuso Pala came on to score at an 81st minute winner for Bafana Bafana at the Orlando Stadium in Soweto. Well, that will be a game of huge concern for Ghana. You know, uh, certainly South Africa going up there and beating Zambia by one goal. Now, remember, Ghana is in that group with Senegal, Algeria, and South Africa. Ending sports tonight. I'm George Adder Jr. Gifty will join us with some more. You have a good night.
You're welcome back. Let's do some showbiz now and controversial hip life artist Kalkasi is due to reappear at the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly Circuit Court on Thursday, February 5, 2014. This follows an adjournment of his case. Now the musician is currently on bail after spending about one month in prison custody following his arrest for smoking uh, substances suspected to be Indian hemp in public. On Monday became necessary because the prosecution was unprepared for the hearing due to ill health of the accused. Prosecutor Superintendent Emmanuel Akono prayed the court for adequate time to prepare a request the presiding judge William Boatin granted. Caucasus lawyer Nana Kwesibwete asked for a longer period to enable his client to travel to Accra to seek further treatment. He addressed the media after Monday's proceedings. For the judicial process, he had to stay back and uh, come to court today. So the court understood that my client needs to go take some time and attend to his health status. Uh, we have adjourned the matter to on the 5th of February. We will come to court and uh, we probably will commence the trial. Kwakasa was granted bail on December 29 after his request had been refused on four previous occasions. Unlike previous proceedings where the premises of the court was packed with sympathizers of the accused, Monday's hearing saw nothing of such. Only a handful of people came to witness the proceedings. Until February 5th, Trust Joy News TV to bring you more on this issue. 2014 was an interesting one for Ghana's showbiz industry. Now, top of the pack will certainly be the mysterious disappearance of hip life artist Castro. Industry players concede it was a year full of ups and downs, but those in film are looking forward to a great and exciting 2015 as they've been telling showbiz. No, well, I'm working behind um, the scenes now. I'm, I'm training for an action flick. Um, lots of work because there are lots of fight scenes. Um, that has been done well because we're having a, a stunt director from LA, School of Stunt. And so, you know, they should expect that coming soon. Good work there. On. Um, we're a growing industry. Um, I've already started that. Anytime I'm producing, I audition. I do auditions. So I'm trying to introduce more faces into the industry. We need more faces, and it's something I've started. I also want to give people the opportunity to, show, um, to showcase their talents. So, yeah, it's something that I really, really want to, you know, take seriously. Well, good films, good films. There's good films, and um, 20, 10 people, and a um, couple of, we're working on a couple of things that people will get to know 2015. It's not about movies. Something else is coming. Well, as an actress, um, I st I'm, I'm still hopeful to, to have um, good roles coming my way. So, yes, I pray that the industry grows from next year. We move from the step that we are to the next step. So, yeah, I pray that things go on well and more investors come in so we can get more jobs to do. Yeah. Um, next year, closer to God, wisdom success in movie, success in business, and a good wife. By the grace of God, the band is growing. Next year, we're going to take stand-up comedy to another level. We pray to God for life, for knowledge, for protection, for wisdom. Next year, we are picking up the campaign against fake pastors, stand-up for Jesus. 2015, okay. Uh, Shirley released a, uh, a mini-series recently, I think it's two months ago, which is still running into 2015 on the website, Vim Republic. I've done something with Calibos, the new guy on the block, well, discovery of the year, and that should be out next year, probably um, February, February should be out. And then I'm still working with Calibos again <laughs> on another movie, uh, sorry, but I'm not supposed to talk about it, so. No, you just did. And I just did, and I was enjoying you, so, yeah, exclusive actually, yes, so that's, that's what I'm working on. Hmm, some good wives for John Dumelon. Whatever happened to Maj's voice? Well, that's it for showbiz.